I know I was so, so guilty of this. What are you doing? You really just want them to watch you. The biggest self-tape mistake. and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, then thank you so, so much for clicking on today's video. It honestly means so much to me. I would love to have you join me for more of my videos, so please do consider smashing that subscribe button. Also, if you enjoy this video, please do smash a big thumbs up to let me know. You guys are literally gonna be so bored of seeing me wear about the same six outfits, but I really have a lack of clothes with me here in Scotland. For today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys five of the top self-tape mistakes that people make. Now, in this world of corona, online auditions, online learning. Self-tapes are becoming even bigger than they were before because they're just efficient and they work in these crazy times. And I personally have made many of these self-tape mistakes. So I thought I would share them with you guys so you guys don't have to go through them as well. So I do hope that this video helps you out. And without further ado, let's get into it. The very first self-tape mistake is having a bad angle. Now, what do I mean by this? I'm meaning don't have a full length body shot. If you guys have seen my reacting to my drama school edition video, you will see that for myself to tape I gave you a full head to toe moment while I was doing my monologue. Now nobody needs to see that and also if you give a full length shot it's really really hard to see your face because your face is going to be tiny on the screen. You really want the angle to be probably what I've got just now. Obviously you would not have this as a background. We'll get onto that later but you just want your head and then the very top of your torso, your shoulders. So yeah you really need that angle to be on point. If you've got a full body moment people are going to be thinking what are you doing? Also you want the angle to be flat on. You don't want the camera to be hitting you from the side or from above a really really bad way is when the camera comes from kind of below and it just will give you a double chin even when you don't have one or if it comes from above it's going to make your forehead look massive and it's just not going to be good because you're going to be looking up at the camera or looking down at the camera you want to get all those tables books chairs everything stacked up nice and high and get your camera at eye level or your phone or whatever you're using that is going to work best for you you can buy tripods on amazon for not too expensive my dad actually bought me this tripod tripod that I'm using just now for quite cheap when I was doing my drama school auditions. It has a phone attachment. I usually have a big tripod that I use to film my videos, but this is the one I take when I'm traveling and it works perfectly well. So you really can buy ones that aren't too expensive and will just make your life a lot easier than having to pile loads of stuff up. The next thing is lighting. People have such bad lighting when they film their self tapes and it just doesn't do them justice. The ideal is to film in natural lighting. I know this isn't always possible, firstly, because the weather in the UK is usually horrendous and the natural lighting is never that great or you might have to film in the evening because you have work or class in the day so although natural lighting is preferred if you can't have natural lighting then try and get a ring light or a softbox now apparently some directors don't like ring light because you can see the ring of light in your eye personally I've never noticed that when I'm filming my videos maybe my ring light is soft enough that you don't have that but yes buying some kind of artificial lighting is just going to make your life a lot easier especially if it's a dull day and you are doing it in front of your windows and you have natural lighting but it's still just looking a bit dark and dingy then a ring light can just really help to bring you to life on this point though you don't want the light to be crazy crazy bright you know when the sun is like beaming in your windows and you can barely see it's just going to wash you out and blur out all your features and not really allow you to show yourself off so you really need that balance between a natural soft light that is going to make you glow and show you off the best but you don't want something that is going to literally wash you out and make your features basically non-existent the next issue a lot of people have is the like aesthetics of the shot and what do I mean by this by this I mean you do not want a busy background a busy outfit busy everything going on because you really just want the director or casting director whoever's watching it to focus on you and your performance not be thinking oh that's a nice table in the background oh what's that mirror they've got there oh that's a pretty cushion you really just want them to watch you so you really want to try and have a plain white background if possible take things off your wall hang up your bed sheet a lot of people people actually hook their bed sheets over their doors and that works really really well as a backdrop. There are many many ways to get very resourceful. You can buy pop-up backdrops of Amazon I think for not too expensive but I think most people can manage to hang up a bed sheet somewhere in their house to give themselves a plain background. It doesn't necessarily have to be white that is just often what is advised so if you can get yourself an old white bed sheet, hang it up, give it an iron so it's not looking too creased, hang it up on your door and that will work perfectly as a backdrop. Also with your outfit you don't 
want it to be too busy. Again with that though, if you are using a white backdrop, you don't really want to wear a white top because then you're probably just going to camouflage into the wall or the bed sheet. So that's probably not going to be too good. But don't have something that has crazy patterns, crazy neon colours on for example. Unless it really fits the character you're auditioning for, you want to keep your outfit a flattering colour for you. So for example, I often wear green because that's a colour that works well for my hair colour and my skin colour. But then you also don't want crazy patterns going on. Again, it's just going to distract from you. Number four, a lot of people often make the mistake of aiming their self-tape in the wrong place. A lot of the times I used to aim my self-tapes literally halfway to nowhere off the camera. That means that the camera literally loses all your face and your performance. But you also don't want to be doing it straight into the camera because that just seems a little bit weird and a bit scary and a bit too personal. So personally for self-tapes, I always just look straight off the camera lens, quite close to it, just off the side and that gives a nice natural aim. Also, it's really ideal to get someone else to read in for you if you are doing a scene. This will also give you somewhere good to aim. If you get them to stand just off center of your camera, you can literally just talk to them. Just make sure that they're at the same eye level as you. If they are super, super tall, you're gonna be aiming it up and that's also gonna look a bit strange. If you can't get someone to read in for you because you're isolating or you live on your own, for example, get someone up on FaceTime and then you can look at them and then they can read in for you. There's so many resourceful ways that you can do it. And worst case scenario, voice note yourself on your phone saying the opposite lines and leave gaps for where you can say your lines. However, that is really the worst case scenario if you can't get someone else on Zoom or FaceTime to read in for you. And number five, the biggest self-tape mistake, which I am very guilty at as well, is doing too many takes. We all do think one of the best things about self-tapes is that we can do as many takes as we want and do it until we are truly happy with it. Whereas in a real life audition, you've got that one chance and you've just got to do what you can do. But I think we often mess ourselves up by doing too many takes. I know I was so, so guilty of this at the start. Honestly, limit yourself to two or three takes do it go watch them if you're really not happy with them come back again the next day and do some more but honestly if you do a self-taping session from eight in the morning till six at night and film it a hundred times you're gonna find something you hate out of all of them it's never gonna be perfect so just do your best and don't drive yourself crazy and lose half your life by filming nine million takes I promise you it's not gonna make much of a difference and that is my five main self-tape mistakes that people often to make. If you guys have any self-tape tips or experiences that you want to share down below in the comments, please do pop them there. I always love reading your comments. If you have enjoyed this video, please do smash a big thumbs up to let me know. It really helps me gauge what videos you guys are liking and what I should make more of. If you haven't already, then please do smash that subscribe button. I would love to have you back for more of my videos. Thank you so much for watching and I will hopefully see you very, very soon. Bye!